Reflection of Grace Outreach Ministries was established to help provide for the natural man so that the spiritual man can receive Christ's salvation by inspiring souls and removing the mask through the Word of God. Also visit us at www.reflectionsofgraceoutreachministries.org for our ministry information, products, and books like A Breath of Melodies. My steps have already been ordered rhythm of rage and so many more only with reflections of grace outreach ministries we better be helping people on our way up because that's what god is looking at he's measuring okay you using your faith but you're selfish in that area okay you're using your faith faith but you want you want love you want to forgive that person you want to forgive these people but you don't want to forgive that person and see we must forgive be angry but sin not Amen. 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 Um, this is really rich. This is really a rich conversation. And there's so much to say behind what everyone has said thus far. Um, it's like everything you said, if you were to paint a picture of, or take a picture of everything that was said tonight, it would probably be my face on it within the last three years. That's everything that has happened to me, and Thomas probably knows predominantly, has been a miracle uh, from somebody who had to, I won't say losing, lose a house, but give up a house. I mean, this house is clean. It was a bungalow. It was six bedrooms, three baths. Somebody who went from a six bedroom three bathroom house mm -hmm. to uh, giving it up to save credit, but wound up moving south, went from a hotel, and I'm not ashamed to tell it, to a homeless veteran shelter. Yep, was in a homeless veteran shelter, mm -hmm. back to the hotel, and then ultimately into the place that God blessed me with. Uh, went from having no job, to a part-time job that only lasted a month, to working in a kitchen for three and a, what, six months. Um, got burned a lot, uh, burnt up my glasses. Uh, glasses almost melted. God uh, delivered me from there, took me to a, I call it a part-time job, but it was full-time, wasn't as much, but it was paying the bills. And then from there, he blessed me to, land um you know the p pandemic happened and then started working this federal position but in the midst of all of that he blessed re-blessed me and repurposed me amen there's something about that word repurpose right just like joseph um how i wound up back in school again and here i am getting my second doctorate uh by the grace of God, and I'm almost done with it. I only got 10 classes, uh, 10 credit hours to do now, two more classes to go. And I'm in um, but in the midst of all that came a lot of heartache, heartbreak, a lot of tears, a lot of fake people, a lot of phony people, a lot of people, what Denise just described, a lot of people you had to bless along the way, not ever knowing if you were ever going to get blessed again or whatever. But, you know, like the word says, whatsoever good thing a man do it the same, he shall receive from the Lord went through all of that within the span of what, in October, it will be, what, three years that I've been down here. And God has blessed me and revived me and resuscitated me spiritually. Um, and this comes from somebody who has lost seemingly a church and or a ministry within the last 10 years, but God is taking me from 1.0 to 2.0. I won't tell the whole story. But I said all I had to say that, Every day I've been down here, uh, every breath of life, every day of life has been miracle upon miracle, precept upon precept. Like I mentioned earlier, there isn't anything that I have written, put in my house on a sticky note and have not put it on the wall that God has not brought it to pass. Wherever I put on a sticky note and put it on the wall, I put it on there in faith and God has brought it to pass. And so I thank the Lord for everything, 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 everything. Um, and it's amazing that even the couch that I have, the little love seat that I have, 
it sits in the place where I first laid my head when I first moved into this place. Because when I moved into this place, I literally had nothing and was sleeping on the floor. But I thank God for his goodness, grace, and mercy, uh, how he blessed me along the way, and how, like much like what Denise said, some people are in your life as blessings. Some people are in your life as queens. They're not there for you to hold on to them. Some people are temporary, and they can't. And sometimes it feels so good to have people in your life when there's been nobody in your life, and you want to hold on to them forever, and they seem like forever people. But the season for them is not forever. The season for them is temporary, but they are only pointers to point you where you should go. And so I thank God for all of that, for every blessing, for every miracle, for every, every everything. Because as I often say, you can tell me here that most times I didn't bring me and I didn't bless me. And so I give God thanks and praise for the miracles. And forgive me, Thomas, you know, I got to say that publicly too. I know sometimes we fall out. We fall out tooth and nail because we argue over some of the most heated things and probably some over some of the most literalist things. But in the end, God has blessed us to be together since, what, the 80s, early 80s, since we were teenagers. Amen. And I was looking out for his babies when he was in basic training. And he was a blessing and an influence for me to go to the military. Amen. Amen. So I said, I'll let to say this. I thank God for all the miracles and for all the blessings. And I thank God for the first miracle. Well, I, I'll say first miracle in part. Um, and I don't often tell this. I think only Thomas knows this. Denise may know this. But there is that one lady on November 7th, 2007, when I gave my first official sermon, we were preaching. And, you know, I, I'm, I grew up in a church where, you know, you don't have, you learn, you don't have to necessarily say, thus say the Lord to pronounce a miracle or a blessing or favor on somebody's life. You don't have to say, thus say the Lord thy God. You can just speak it in terms of a miracle and miracles. You know, I guess it's because I grew up spiritually in a healing, deliverance, prophetic, church of God in Christ environment. And so I learned the ways of prayer and ministry and things like that. Um, this particular ministry, miracle, and I don't often tell it, um, I knew, well, I, one of my prayers was that Okay, if there was no prayer line, of course, I'm in the Baptist environment, that if there's no laying of hands, there's no prayer, that if and when the word is spoken, that bodies will be healed, miracles will happen. In the midst of that sermon, I didn't know what was happening. I was just preaching flawlessly. Honestly, well, Thomas was there. I have a witness. There was no mistakes or anything. I'll get to it quickly. Um, at the end of the sermon, this lady comes up to me. She has on a gray pantsuit, and she's very, very, you know, mobile. She's, she's very lively. But she said, when you were preaching, she said, I came in here, I came in here with a stroke. Half of my body could not move. She said, but as you spoke and when you spoke and every time you spoke, the, the part that was under a stroke started moving. She said, every time you spoke, there was life came into my body. And I was shaken because, you know, this was one of my prayers. It was a silent prayer. I didn't tell nobody about this. Not only Thomas knew, but uh, she's like, thank you. And I gave God praise because that was one of the, that was the answer prayer that as the preaching went forth, of course, no laying of hands, no oil, no speaking in tongue or nothing. But as the word went forth, bodies would be healed. Miracles would happen. Yokes would be destroyed. Urgence would be lifted. And that lady who came in with half of her body and she couldn't move, she started moving because the word of life was preached. And the name of that sermon was Fire With No Power from Job 3, um, 25. But yeah, I said it to say this. It's all about the miracle and the miracle happening. And like you said, Denise, you never know who you're going to bless. You never know how your life is going to just inspire somebody or how your testimony is going to ignite somebody. And I'm glad we're going over time too. That miracle there, that was amazing because that was encouragement to keep on preaching. And for any preacher that preaches, that's one of the reasons why you do what you do. I know that's a preacher secret. I ain't going to take my preacher card. Uh, <laughs> but um, that is why we do what we do. Because when you preach, and the word goes forth, and bodies are literally being healed 
in the congregation and in those pews and yokes are literally being destroyed in those congregations and in those pews and people change their minds. Sometimes you have only 35 minutes to say what people have been battling with for 35 years, 35 months, 35 hours, 35 minutes. And if you don't say something within 35 to 45 minutes of a sermon, somebody's going to get a divorce, somebody's going to break up, somebody's going to commit suicide. Uh, it's going to be somebody's last day of life. Hell is going to break loose. But praise be to God for the miracles that come out of your mouth through the words uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, which is why I love 2 Corinthians 2 and 4. It says, and my speech and my preaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and of the power. I'm going to stop right there. I can talk forever about miracles. I love miracles. I love talking about them. I know what it takes to get them. Sometimes it takes hell breaking loose for a miracle to happen. Preferably don't get to that point. But I pray, even now, that as I shut my mouth, that I pray that God blesses everybody on this line with the miracle that they need and that they want and that they desire in this hour. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anyone else have anything that they want to add to the discussion? Yeah, I got one more thing, if it's all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even in the midst of what I'm dealing with, you know, I thank God for bringing me through, bringing me out for what he has. Thank God for the conversations I've been having with Thomas lately in terms of counseling. But um, there are certain things I'm believing God for miracle-wise, even now. And all I can say is, based upon what he's done and his track record and God being God and him being faithful, I'm believing him for more things to happen, even this very month, even this very week, even in this hour. There are some needs I have, some desires I have, some wants I have, and I'm just trusting him to bring it all the past a lot of sticky notes I still have on the wall, stuff I got on the vision board. <laughs> but I am believing God to do it all. Amen. 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 It's done. It's done. Hallelujah. Amen. It's done, even if it's not the way that um, you perceive it or um, desire. It's done. Amen. It's done. In Jesus' name, it's done. Amen. Amen. I, I receive it. It's done. Amen. It's done. That's, that's the word. It's done. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. And you know, I want. I was looking at this verse, Matthew 5. and I mean, I'm sorry, Matthew, the 8th chapter and the 8th verse, where the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, wow. but only speak a word. Yeah. And my servant will be healed. See, we got to speak things in our in a di- existence. We're not, talking That's about, it, man. <laughs> we're not talking about naming and claiming and all of that stuff. We're talking a real speak a word, meaning that we have to have the word in us, the faith in us to step out and believe that what you're asking God to do for you will be done. So we may want a miracle. We might think about a miracle, but sometimes times haven't gotten as hard enough for you. Sometimes things haven't gotten as bad for you in order for you to call out to him. Like just like this other, the 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 uh the synchrophoenician lady, which they call a Gentile lady, came up to, to Jesus and said, have mercy on me. Sometimes we gotta ask God to have mercy on us for our mm-hmm. blessings and for our miracles to happen. We don't know what may be hindering it. We don't know what may be holding up that blessing or that miracle. So when we have asked God to have mercy on us, then that shows that we have humility, that we're coming before him as less than him. A lot of people think that they're equal because they drive fancy cars or have big houses or or have all of the the attention on them in, in the in the human world but in the spirit world what are they doing what are they doing how how are they connecting to god you know and that's why we have to often keep ourselves in humility like everyone has been saying on this call it takes humility and faith both of those work together for good Humility and faith work together for good. So when we know that we know 
that we know that God is with us, then we just have to call out to the Lord and, and tell God, speak a word and make that thing manifest for, for me because I'm your humble servant. I need you right now. We got to break those, those prideful cur uh, the, the thoughts and those uh, me, myself, and I thoughts like Denise has been talking about. It's time for a miracle in each of our lives. We have been through so much that most of us won't even talk about. Most of us want to forget. Most of us need to forget. But God has been faithful to us. And I walk in humility. I talk in understanding who Jesus is and who God is. And our belief that we are men and women of God can, can, can start the chain reaction of miracles happening in our lives. Or we could pray and everybody can corporate pray for each other, but let's pray for ourselves. Let's get on our knees. Let's get in our closets and start asking God, Lord, have mercy on me. What is it that you need for me to do in my life that you will bless me? And when you start building that personal relationship with Christ, personal relationship with God, then you can speak the word. You can send the word to God. You can talk to God about it. And God can manifest those miracles, those miracles that you are predestined to have. He will speak it and it will come into existence. We just have to believe and I, I want to add to that, um, again, we know that the scriptures are the living, true word of God. Jesus was flesh. He is the word of God. And, and, and these words, we're reading these words because these are the promises and these are the testimonies and these are the works and the things that Jesus did. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, he says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Now, we want to please God, right? We think we're pleasing God by every time we dodge a bullet or we don't tell a lie or we don't fornicate or we, you know, didn't participate in a crime. We, we're we totaling up and calculating our righteousness. But uh -uh, God, ain't, God ain't keeping up with tabs like that about us. He's looking at our faith. See, he's invisible and our faith is invisible because faith is what the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So God wants us to connect with him through our faith because our faith is inter interconnected with him. I mean, our faith represents who God is basically in our lives. That's what our faith is representing, not how much we boast and talk about what we got and who we are in our own selves and in our own intellect and our degrees. No, our faith. Our faith is basically demonstrating who God is and what are we saying to God through our faith. We Like the scripture says, I want to finish reading, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is, must believe what? That he, that he is real and he is a spirit because we cannot see him with our physical, natural eyes. Our faith is connected to him. Our faith knows who he is. And it says, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently, who diligently seek him. Going back to Matthew chapter seven, verse seven and eight, ask, seek, and knock. Right there in that asking, it says, for everyone who asks, receives, everyone. Everyone who asks receives. What is it that you're asking God for? You will receive it. But it's an action word. You must seek. And that's an action word. You must do your research. You must write out your vision. You must read it and declare it every day. Whatever it takes to keep it alive before the Lord. Because see, the enemy is after your faith. The world is here to crush you. It is here to destroy your beliefs in God because it does not know God. The Bible says the world don't know me. How can the world really understand me? The world don't know the Holy Spirit. The world don't, can't find the Holy Spirit. The world don't even know the language of the Holy Spirit. But we who are born again believers in Jesus, Jesus is telling us that not only will you find what you're looking for, what you're praying for, but you will find me. Jesus is the miracle. Um, in the Bible, it shows in these scriptures, in this discussion, Jesus went from where? From town to town to town, looking for those who had faith. 
And he demonstrated his miracles in those people's lives who had faith. And certain people, they were down on their luck. They needed nothing at that point but a miracle. They didn't have money to go to a doctor. The woman with the issue of blood, she had money. She went bankrupt. Couldn't no doctor heal her. And as a matter of fact, it wasn't even designed for them to heal her. But God wanted her to be memorialized to tell that, test that testimony will be told until we enter the kingdom of heaven and leave here. Entering the kingdom of heaven at this given time that we're alive is renewing our mindset, putting these scriptures in our minds, letting these scriptures process our faith, helping us to understand how to walk according to the Bible, how to get connected to God in the spirit. That's what, the, that's what these scriptures are telling us right now. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. When God spoke to me, seek ye first the kingdom of God, when I started reading the Bible diligently, I didn't know what that meant. God told me over time what that meant. It meant that I want you to get in this Bible, renew your mind with what the Bible is saying to you. That's how I'm communicating with you. That's how I'm teaching you. Not you running to a church, not you sitting up under somebody giving you the lessons of the Bible. No, you seek ye first the kingdom of God. You, you sit here and read scriptures, even if you don't understand them, keep reading them because when your heart is right, I'm going to make your spirit right. And then I'm going to connect with you and I'm going to breathe in you and I'm going to grow you up and you're going to live by this. You're going to live by this. Not by the human bread, the light bread that you got in the kitchen and the wheat bread. You're going to live by this bread. Because the Bible tells us that no man can live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So proceeds from the mouth of God. So we have to get this word down inside of us to understand that's how we getting the manifestations was in the kingdom of God. We're getting these blessings right now that God says all the promises are yes and amen in him, in Christ Jesus. We know Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins. So what else did he do for us? What else did he die to offer us? What else? Not waiting on the by and by. We got that. That's already lock, stock, and barrel. We are sealed to the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. So that is already given to us, our spiritual inheritance laid up for us. But he wants to constantly know you're walking on this journey. You're appealed this is a foreign land. You're not here to stay. This is not your home. You're going towards the new Jerusalem, but you got to get that mindset. You got to get that mindset. Get up out of the, the muck and the mire. Get up out of those bad, broken, rejected situations and get up and renew your mind because he got something for us. He's only not only telling us the promises are laid out for us, but we must renew our minds and seek ye first the kingdom of God. And what he says, his part of that bargain, and he will add all of his righteousness to us. Adding righteousness to, is to heal us, is to reveal miracles to us, is to bless us and to bless our families, bless our friends, and even bless our enemies. The Bible says bless those who curse you. God has given us such the impact of his spirit and power that people would know, they can't even ignore that God ain't looking at you and loving on you and blessing you because your glow is a glow on you. People see it, they speak in it, they don't understand what that means. It is not makeup. It is, it is not, you know what I'm saying? None of that. It is the spirit Spirit. It is the aura. It is the angels that are assigned to you. They go before you. They on your side. They behind you. They blocking everything to protect you so that you can reach that destinated place that God has for you. And, and I'm telling you, saints, this is so real. Our lives are speaking. Our lives, our faith is our narrative as how did you live? Because if you can say all day long you believe in Jesus, but you have never applied your faith in him for the things that he said you can have, then uh-uh, you're not pleasing him. The Bible says it is impossible. Impossible, impossible to please him without faith. Faith is the number one key that he gives us to turn the door, to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Get up, Denise. I have work for you to do. I mean, God began to just speak. I mean, it's just one word, two words. God began to build dialogue with you according to your obedience. Then you're having a great conversation like he did with Moses. Take your sandals off. You're standing on holy ground. You know what I'm trying to say? God began when he he pulled Moses constantly, draw, drawn him to him. He let him have his married, married life. He let him hide from that murder that he committed in Egypt for years. But when God stepped in on the scene, now it's time for his work to get done. This is how, why I spared you. This is why you're still alive, okay? So we have to understand why is God constantly sparing us? He tell us not to worry about how we're going to eat. So he's going to feed us just like he feed the birds and the sparrows. Those they, they, they mean nothing to him like we do. We're human. We're made in his image. We look like God as he continues to conform us into the son of Jesus. So we have to continue to believe that God 
again, Jesus is the miracle, saints. Let's let's get the foundation right. Because when God promised me uh, years ago a recent miracle, which I'm living in now, my house, he spoke that he got a miracle for me. And I didn't know what he said, a blessing with my name on it and a miracle. And it was a miracle to get into this house. So I told Jesus at that time, I have a document. I said, Jesus, Jesus, you are my miracle. Now, I didn't know what was the name, what was going to be the miracle that was going to manifest and what it was going to be wrapped like and, or anything. But I said, I said, God, this got to be you. I keep hearing that you're saying you're giving me. I told my husband, I documented it. So what I'm saying to you, keep in your forethought, Jesus, you are my miracle because Jesus is the only one who can save us. Jesus is the only one who is the firstborn from the dead. He is the first resurrection. So we know in this life that there's more than just this. We are, he taking us from glory to glory to glory. So we're moving along, saints. We're not standing still. We, we can't stay here. No matter how much we ain't ready, we, we moving on through this journey. So we have to believe that we're going to a greater place. We're going to a greater place in him and position and, and stature and wherever that may be. But we know that right now, people, God is drawing people to us. He's drawing people to your testimony. He's drawing people to your lives. And he wants people to know that he is there. He's in you. He's in them. He wants us to get together so that we can be, so he can be glorified, so that we can continue to exalt his name. God, I'm telling you, he can do all things but fail. He ain't never lost a case. He ain't never turned his back on no one that he has loved and created. And the Bible says, all all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and to those who are called. Look, you got to love God in that Bible. Everybody like to quote that, but you got to love God. And the demo how to demonstrate to love God is keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. That's how you love God. You practice what this Bible says. That's how God says you love me. Not by, oh, I love God. I just love God. And he does it. No, no, no. You got to obey what the Bible says. What he say, forgive those who hurt you. Bless those who curse you. Love your enemies. Feed those who are hungry. Don't even wait for them to ask you because they, they feel bad sometimes. They feel ashamed. Ask somebody, can I help you? Is there anything you need? Or even just hand it to them. God loves all of that. He loved the humility, giving from humility because it shows that he's the one that gave it to you. I mean, we, didn't, we ain't really working for none of the stuff we're getting. We're just alive. That's what he's doing. He's sparing us and keeping us alive to understand how his mercies are. He's lavishing his mercies on us every day. Mm -hmm. We ain't doing jack. We ain't doing nothing. But waking up, oh, God, you called my name. I'm alive. And what that means is that somebody said, hey, Thomas, how you doing today? God woke him up. And he remembered, oh, I'm alive. I'm up. I'm not in the coffin. So what that means is that God woke you up and your name is established in the earth. And that's what God is doing to all of us. We are not stagnant as long as we continue to keep our faith active. And we keep our faith active, active by waking up saying, God, you're real. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you, God. You don't, it don't even matter. You ain't got to think of one thing. Just tell them thank you. You ain't got to get cleaned up to tell, get your mind regulated. Just say, say thank you before your feet hit the floor. Thank him in the bed. Even if you don't feel like getting on your knees to pray, thank him right there because he wants humility. That's what God wants. Where's your heart at? Is your heart with me or is your heart with men? So God is looking right there every day judging how he's going to extend us and how he's going to continue to promote us and how he's bringing that miracle closer and closer and closer and closer into our lives. And it ain't one miracle, saints. It's multiple miracles. And they're constantly being revealed and they're constantly coming to us and they're written on the calendar and we just got to keep on praising him and he is the one to put those desires in our hearts to talk about miracles because we know those miracles are what supernatural they come from the spirit they come from the from the god above that we are serving who is spirit and we're serving him through his word which is the truth we ain't creating nothing we ain't got no special little secret we're talking about what the bible says we're just opening it up and we're talking to each other and we're fellowshipping we're inviting god in and we're thanking him for just a allowing us to understand this word is bread. This word is what? Life. This word is going to continue to grow us up and fill us up in our inner man, in our hearts, so that when we are down and out, then the Holy Spirit bring a word to us, and then we can get joy. We can eat that. Chew on that. Chew that up. Gravitate on that. <laughs> you know, that's what God is saying. I give you word per day. You don't have to know the whole Bible. He told Ezekiel, what is it? Ezekiel ate the scroll. It tastes like honeycomb. So it was sweet to his soul. So that's what God is saying. Let my word be good to you because it is good to us because we know the word became flesh. Mm -hmm. And that's Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'll stop right there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come here, Amen. Jordan. Come Amen. here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and it's funny that um 
you say that like we well, just said just wake up in the morning and just give thanks because my baby Paris when she used to be little like I know like two they used to be like you know when people see kids hey how you doing and the first thing she'll say is I woke up this morning but <laughs> But the thing about it is she didn't understand the significance of what she said. And I was like, that's right, baby. God woke you up this morning. So, hey, you doing great. You doing awesome. So everybody was just so, like, just all, like, oh, my God. Like, you know, because God taught the kids, too. You have to listen to your children. Sometimes you be like, I, I listen to my kids and be like, huh? Because God, like, they, they have a pure heart. So the angels and stuff going to protect them and be around them always to guide them and lead them. So you have to just listen to your kids. And, and, and like you said, I woke up this morning. He woke me up this morning. That's right. So give thanks. <laughs> Amen. 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 That is so true. <laughs> So, she in there hollering, amen. She run through the house, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> That's beautiful. Amen. <laughs> amen. And so, yes. And that's a, everything that said tonight was powerful, was meaningful for such a time as this. We cannot give up the faith. We cannot give up when things look so bad that's going around us because we are already chosen. We are already predestined to be who God has called us to be. It's the devil that tries to tell us that we're less than or something is wrong with us or we need to do some extra this and that and the other. That's been established ever since the apostles that somebody always said you needed to have a little extra this in order to be saved or you need to have or show a little extra this in order to for people to know that you are with God. But all you have to do is believe and have faith. And that's the wonderful thing about where we live in society in our lives today. It doesn't take a whole lot to build a relationship with God. It doesn't take a whole lot to accept Christ as your personal savior. And, and if, if you don't know how or what is, is needed, you know, that's our job as men and women of God, to teach those that have a, a desire to know God, that have a, a thought to understand what is salvation means to us and what is being a Christian. We have to be willing to tell them and let us in our lives be a miracle that takes people out of their circumstances through the word of God that elevates people's mindset by looking at us as examples of men and women of Christ and who we can pray for them, pray with them, and things start to happen. That they can see, like Dr. Marcel said, you know, in his sermon, that it was just speaking the word and those things came into existence, the healing and, and the miracles. We have to get to that point in our relationship. And a lot of times God will give us words to speak you know, impartations or uh, words of edification to people. And you know God is touching your heart to say these things. Just, just don't hold back. Ask God, Lord, is this what you really want me to say to these people? Is this what you really need me to, to, to go to this person and say? It, you know, know that the relationship that you have with God is real. You're not, you, you know God's voice and God knows you and he hears your prayers and he speaks to you and you speak for him on this earth. So let's gather, let's gather our minds, let's gather our minds on that to understand and know that it's time for our miracle, everyone. We have our miracles already laid out for us. It's just how we walk and how we choose to get it. It's how we position ourselves in alignment with God through the Holy Spirit for those miracles in faith and in obedience can manifest themselves in our lives. Amen. 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 So that, Amen. that concludes tonight's 
uh, discussion. I'm going to open the floor if anyone have anything else to say, closing remarks before we um, end the discussion. I'm so thankful this was a, a very beautiful discussion that really touched on a lot of bases, a lot of levels, and, and it reached a lot of lives and hearts today. And I just pray that you all continue to walk by faith and not by sight because Amen. that's what's going to get us where we need to go. So I'll open up. Amen. I just want to say thanks to everybody. Like you said, this discussion was well needed. Um, everything was lovely and just, just said so beautifully. It couldn't have been said any better. I just want to thank everybody for all the birthday wishes. Um, it is truly, truly a blessing to really be here. God has blessed me to be here these 34 years. I pray that he keep me another 34 and then some. But um, some people are not even blessed to even be here at my age. I'm every day like somebody way younger. It's, it's getting younger and younger. It used to be. You know, back in the days, you know, the older people like, oh, they were 100, they were 90, they were 80. Then now it's trickling on the 50. And then now it's so common for 40 and 30 and 20 year olds to go now. So it is such, such a blessing just to even be able to even open my eyes to even be on this call with you guys. So I just thank you guys for all the love, all the support, all the encouragement, and just all the unconditional love that you guys give. Like I said, you just don't know how how much and how far that just these these discussions go. They go a long way. So I really appreciate it. I love you guys and have a nice week. Amen. Amen. Before we go. Amen. Amen. Before we go, I want to read this poem that the Lord gave to me. Um, and then we're going to close out with prayer. It's called Preparation. And he gave this to me in 2004. When the Lord reveal your gifts, prepare yourself to be used by him. He has the master plan written just for you. Don't expect to always be of good cheer. Just get yourself in order to receive it. You must sacrifice your time to hear from him. When you see the vision or hear him speak, be faithful and receive his words for they are real. In due season, you will see the magnitude. Don't let anyone distract you or tell you different. Being obedient to the spirit of God lets him know that you are thankful for what he's about to birth. Amen. 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 We're going to close out with a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to come together tonight, oh God. Father, we thank you because you woke us all up this morning and we're so grateful to break bread and to talk about who you are. We know, Lord God, that you love us because your word tells us and because of the things that we have gone through in our lives, Father. We know, Father, that you love us because you rescued us. You sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us, oh God. And we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us and how you're loving on us and teaching us and showing us that you are the resurrection and that we can continue to walk by faith because there's more to life than what we see right now. There's more ahead that you have in store for those who love you. And Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being the teacher, for being our comforter, for showing us the right way to go and granting us knowledge and wisdom of the Bible and what you're teaching us to know in all circumstances that come against our lives. Father, we're so grateful to be called your children, oh God. We are so thankful. Father, we pray to reach our destinies, to reach the, the missions and the promises and, and fulfill all of the assignments that you have called and placed upon our lives, oh God. God, I pray that you would stir up on the inside of all of us the gifts stir up oh god the, the the words that you have planted on the inside of us lord we pray that these words lord that we're holding on to in hope of what we believe lord god about salvation about your son jesus about the blood about the cross oh god we pray oh god that we will continue to just show in obedience god that that this word that you have placed on the inside of us this hope this faith oh god is growing is growing father we thank you oh god that we see lord god that 
that you are keeping us and that you have planted us all where we are currently right now, Lord. Lord, you see us where we are positioned in the spirit. You see us in the natural. And I pray, oh God, that you will find us worthy. Find us worthy, oh God. Clean us, Lord. Uh, show us, Lord God, what we're doing wrong, how we are sometimes, Lord God, lazy, and we don't want to get up and do the things that you call us to do. Lord, help us to fight the flesh. Help us to understand, Lord, that we cannot do, we cannot please you with our righteousness. We cannot please you when we put our lives on some type of system and trying to go about teaching others in a religious way about what we do and how we know you. Lord, help us to be spontaneous when you wake us up. Help us to love you, Lord God, in an intimate way that it keeps continually drawing us, wooing us, helping us to have a romance with you because we love you. We love you, God. We want to know you greater and greater so that we can be called your children in eternity, oh God. God, we are alive. We have breath in our bodies because you gave it to us because you are blowing your breath into our nostrils, oh Lord. Lord, we are nothing but clay. We are nothing but dirt. Lord, we come before you naked and unashamed. Lord, we've done so many things, Lord God, against your word, against your will. But Lord, right now, we are coming to you. We are recalibrating ourselves in this word. We want to be focused. We want to know what to do in this hour, Lord. The world is going crazy. There's so many things that are spinning out of control. But God, you are in control. You have created everything. You are passing judgment. And Lord, I pray that you will find mercy when you look down upon us and that you will see, oh God, what we are striving for, what we want to do. We want to please you because we have faith. We have faith, Lord God, the grain of a mustard seed. And Father God, we are declaring and decreeing that we want to receive and see more miracles that you have put into our lives. You've done many miracles in our past, Lord. A lot of us wouldn't even be here tonight if it wasn't for your miracles, rescuing us, pulling us out of abusive situations and helping us, oh God, to, to shielding us from, from so much pain that we didn't even understand how to process, oh Lord, drying our tears in the midnight hour, sitting us down, Lord, putting us in quiet seasons that we didn't recognize that you were keeping us and preserving us and restoring us, Lord God, and keeping us, Lord, on the right path. Lord, we thank you for the intervention. We thank you, oh God, for just letting us know that we are marked because your blood, your son Jesus paid a ransom for our souls, paid a ransom for us to be able to right now come together and glorify your name, your son Jesus' name. We thank you, Jesus. We exalt your name. There's no greater name than your name, Jesus. There's so many people using your name in vain and preaching false gospels. But Father God, we come to you in this word, the foundation of this word. We come to you, oh God, serving you, humbling ourselves and understanding how we got grafted into the faith by being Gentiles through the faith of Abraham, oh God. We thank you, Father, for the example. We thank you, Lord, how we can come equally, Lord God, to the cross, Lord, and thank you for the gift of salvation, and thank you, oh God, for remembering us, for allowing us, Lord, to make it through times that we didn't even understand this much information. We didn't even understand how to put this word together to even have the hope, but neither, neither to just sit and feast, Lord God, off of your word. Lord, we thank you for stirring up our hearts and our minds to just continue to come before you, pressing, Lord God. We're pressing every week, trying to come and, and bring this word and, and feast and talk about this word. Lord, we ask and invite you at all times to, to help us to orchestrate your plan, to orchestrate your will, Lord, daily in our lives with what you want us to think about, what you want us to celebrate you for, and sing hallelujah and praises unto your son Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we're so grateful, Holy Spirit, for protecting us from danger seen and unseen. Lord, you kept us when you, you knew, Lord God, you know where the virus is at. You know who is on. You know the people that are living foolishly, Lord God. You know the people that Satan is using to, to spread this, to try to harm and call cause havoc against your saints, Lord. But I thank you, God, for shielding us. I thank you, God, for blowing that blowing that virus in another direction when we come near it. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you for shifting us, Lord, shifting us to new beginnings, helping us, oh God, to understand the seasons, the times that we're moving in, Lord. We're moving as pilgrims, Lord. Our bags are packed. Lord, we are moving wherever you say go, whatever you say do, Lord, because we know you've got provision. Wherever you are sending us to, oh God, we thank you, God, because you are the great I am. You, you are the almighty God. God, you are the lawyers. You are the doctors. You are the healers. You you everything that we need, Lord. We don't have to look outside your word. We look, we're looking inside this word, Lord God, as a mirror. And we are feasting, Lord God. We thank you for this revelation. We thank you, oh God, for this manna. 
Father, I just pray that you will continue to reveal your power and your righteousness, Lord God, that we will be called saints, Lord. We know that the enemy comes, the devil comes to wear us out. He's watching the saints. He don't care about the devil, the, the devil's children, because he is the devil, Lord. But I thank you for letting us understand that we have a special place. We have a place to hide, and that's under the name of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for being our strong tower, for hiding us. Your, your name, it protects us, it shields us, it guides us. It is a weapon. It is a sword. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever weapon is formed against us, Lord, that it will fall on that person, Lord God, who has formed it, who has plotted it against us, Lord. I pray that they fall on their own sword. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for the victories. I thank you, oh God, for opening up our eyes to run, to run like never before, to understand that we all must run our own race, and we all must mind our own business, oh God, when we hear negativity, when we see darkness, Lord, but to pray and ask you, oh God, to cover us and bring your people through, Lord, that love you and want you. God, you are the one that judge, just like you told Oh, Joseph. Joseph understood that you exalted him and that he could not pass judgment against his brothers. He knew that you were the living God and that only you can pass judgment because you delivered him from every circumstance and situation that he went through to get to that point. And God, I thank you for showing us how you loved him so much. You blessed his bones to be able to leave Egypt and be planted, Lord God, in Canaan. Lord, you show us that you're so good and merciful. You, you let us have rest eternally, God, with you when you resurrect us, God. Those things matter, God, because you love your people. You are guiding your people. You're letting us know that we must have your standards of righteousness. We must strive towards your perfection, not what we want, oh God. God, help us to understand what you want. Ask you first, God, because your Bible says, for everyone who asks, receives. And Father, I ask that you would release miracles. I ask, oh God, that you would release these miracles, God. We are believing, God. We got our minds open. We got our hearts open, God. We got our arms open, oh Lord. Lord, I pray that you would rain down this these wonderful, wonderful gifts, these wonderful blessings that you are birthing inside of us, oh God. Lord, I pray that you shake the ground wherever we may go, that people move out the way, oh God, to know that we are your people. We are vessels that you are claiming, vessels that you have already marked, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you would bless every ear, every eye, oh God, on this call and everyone in the future that may hear this blessed word. Lord, we thank you. We pray that you would never, Lord, forget our, our prayers and our cries and our hunger, Lord God. We know that it took so much against the devil tried to pull us apart and tried to get us to not get on this call. Lord, but I thank you for showing us how we must fight. We must fight towards doing right. We must fight towards exalting your name, Jesus. No matter how difficult, no matter if nobody calls God, we said thank you. We give you glory. We woke up this morning. We got clothes on our backs. We're clothed in our right minds, oh God. There are people who, who walk in the streets that have lost their minds, God. Everybody ain't out there because they're poor and everybody ain't out there because they want to be out there. There are people who have literally lost their minds. And God, we thank you that we're not lost. God, we thank you that we're found because of your spirit, because of your blood. You have located us, God. We thank you for this word. We thank you for receiving this mail today, Lord, that miracles are right now. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, we'll be, we'll be forever for God to tell others about your miracles and tell them about your majesty, who you are. You are brilliant. You are everything, oh God, that our vocabulary can't even spell. We can't even pronounce, oh God. God, we thank you for just letting us know that you are our God. We claim you. We love you. We serve you. We honor you. You are first and foremost. We thank you for the examples of Abraham and all the way to your son, Jesus, and all the apostles and disciples, Lord God, that followed your righteousness. Father, I thank you for the for the ancestors that we can we can walk, watch and model and how which way to go lord god to stay in your will father i thank you letting for letting us know that faith is the key faith unlocks the door to get you to move faith shows us that you will open up windows faith shows us that miracles are falling down upon us right now oh god you're granting us favor lord favor is supernatural is coming from heaven lord all of these blessings that are wrapped up in disguises and avalanche of blessings oh lord suddenly suddenly god we thank you right now that they're revealing themselves. They're coming, Lord God. And we thank you, Jesus. Every day that we wake up, God, we're getting closer to it. Lord, when the enemy comes to try to make us not have faith or, or sh shake us or try to take our hope, Lord, we have to continue to know Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares
declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. God, we thank you for this hope. We thank you for this word because this word is hope. This word is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. God, we thank you. You have brought us from a mighty long ways and we didn't even have eyes to understand that you were pulling us through with faith. And Father, we thank you for increasing us. Thank you for blowing your breath into our nostrils. And I plead the blood of Jesus over everybody because we have the victory. We cannot win without having faith, God. And we need you right now, Lord. And we say, come visit us, God, at any time. You're welcome. Father, send your angels, whichever way, God, you want to deliver the blessings and the miracles. We receive it in Jesus' name and help us, Lord God, not to miss it, not to get occupied or preoccupied with nonsense and foolishness in this earth, Lord. Let us get bored of this foolishness down here, oh God. Let us, Lord God, rest in you. Let us have enjoyment in sitting in your presence and being alone and sitting in our homes and having great peace and thanking you, Lord God, for keeping the evil out there and restoring our lives and restoring our health and our bodies. Oh God, we thank you for for being our medicine. We thank you for being our deliverance. In Jesus' name, I pray the blood of Jesus. We shall reach the promised land. We are in the promised land, Lord God, because there is an inheritance that we are all, all, Lord God, looking forward to. And we thank you for it right now. We thank you for these blessings right now. We thank you for the ones to come. In Jesus' mighty, precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen. You know, I'm a little lightheaded from that prayer. <laughs> I was about to be slain in the spirit. <laughs> but I thank, <laughs> I thank you all for joining with us tonight. And please know, faith, hope, and love. Those are the things that we should carry with us. And no matter what God, what the devil might meant for bad, for evil, for each and one of us in our life, we've got to know that God, We'll turn it around for our good, no matter what. And no weapon formed against you all shall prosper. And we believe that. And so with that, have a good night. And God Amen. bless you all. Amen. 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 Amen